Good evening, guys. Let me adjust just a little bit here. What we're looking at is an ad, and I believe it's a early 2000, 2002 something Gamecock magazine. We're going to talk about some real interesting stuff, and I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to try to remember what it know from those days and from prior to this. This is kind of a goes along the lines of the question I'm asking. And, and first of all, before we start, I want everybody to know I am not beating up anybody. And I'm not attending. I got, I'm going to ask a question. And I, what I'd like is for anybody and not that, that actually has the literature, actually has the knowledge in front of them, the written word in front of them, from that day and era, not something off of Google. Like an old warrior, any kind of old magazine, anything, and we'll talk about it, if you'll send it to me, I'll, I'll put your, your stuff up, and I'll talk about it here on YouTube, we're going to talk about sweater for a second, and I'm going to read what Grady Fields says, okay, and that was on his Full page ad he had in the Gamecock magazine for many, many years. And this is about as much as I ever seen written about sweater. Okay, now I may have just missed it. It may have been something that didn't catch my, you know, my attention. But I'm here to tell y'all guys, you, you hardly ever heard sweater's name back then, uh, during the legal days. Uh, especially before the people brought in the yellow legged chickens and called them sweater, but uh, but the authentic sweater, the sweater McGinnis. Okay, what Grady Fields says here is in the forties, Mister C. C. Cook, who lived in Oklahoma, bought all the E. W. Law. The all E.W. Law spine file and the law and Law Ridge Plantation in Florida. Shortly after Mr. Mr. Cook bought all of Mr. Hatch's file. There you see he's referring to Sandy Hatch. And moved them, moved the Hatch file to the Law Ridge Plantation. At the time, Mr. J.D. Perry and my uncle Jerry Fields headed the Law Ridge headed Law Ridge, and shipped me the cream of the Laws, the Madigans, the Clarets, and the Hatch. J.D. also gave me my family a Kelso, which were given to Mr. Perry by Mr. Kelso when J.D. worked for the Corpus Club in Texas. Okay? He's referring to his bloodline. Now is where he's going to bring his sweater. Okay, Mr. Sweater McGinnis. Sweater McGinnis moved to Oklahoma and operated the Blanchard Pit in the early 50s. That's the early 50s. At the time, he fell in love with my Perry Hatch. This is the Perry, the Hatch chickens that Mr. Perry, Mr. J.D. sent him. J.D. Perry. Okay. And I thought his ginger hatch was good, and we crossed and blended the ginger with the Perry hatch on, on my yard. From these matings came a set strand of hatch fowl that were fighting machines. Shortly after, Sweater gave me his green-legged grays, which were the good ones of the polecat family. Through careful selection and breeding, my fowl are better than when set as a strand. Okay. Now it's going to bring about our topic. Everything this old man said about sweater 
in his hat spile and the green legged grays. It's pretty much runs along the same lines of what you would hear and see at any cockpit in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Early when it was true gaff men's sport. When it was before the short knife ever entered and the long knife was just breaking in and prior to that. Okay? I can tell you for a fact I never seen a hatch file that was called blue face before Facebook maybe I was just ignorant and didn't know what I was looking at this could have happened that wasn't lemon hackled at the darkest a medium light red you never seen that dark mahogany colored rooster. But what you did see, and I seen them personal, I seen roosters that come from trios from this man right here, of them hatch file that he's referring to. And they were mahogany red, big bone, good roosters. I also had personal experience for many years with the gingers. Okay? My daddy's partner, Mr. McKnight, Mr. Tommy McKnight, had the ginger hatch from sweater. Or that's so to be said, I, I didn't see him get them and he didn't get them probably I don't know if he got them direct or not I don't know any of that but I do know they were mahogany red and they were excellent little roosters um, I didn't like them as good as I did my grave digger chickens when it come time for me to to sort out what I was going to keep and what I was going to get rid of and I didn't sell them I put them in a hole because back then we wouldn't sell you a feather they were good roosters. I had some of them that were five and six time winners. And they were game little roosters. Uh, cut really good. They were good chickens. They were mahogany red little roosters. My question is, and this is just something to say, hon. This ain't doubting anybody. This ain't judging anybody. This has nothing to do with any individual. This is a question that we should all explore and we'll continue to do this about other breeders see through time even the gray chickens that he refers to the polecat family that was the only gray fowl that i ever heard referred to sweater during the legal days of the sport and beyond before that was that polecat and i absolutely had one of them hens she was half. She was straight grady field. There were several people from this area that bought chickens from Mr. Grady Field. Okay? They bought the hatch chickens and they bought the gray chickens. Them little gray chickens, to be honest with you, they were as game as the day is long. As game of roosters as I have ever seen. And they had as much bottom. As any rooster to this day I've ever seen. But if you looked at them in a, you know, just standing in a dump pen or whatever, you'd think that little rooster couldn't take much. He was, they wasn't real big bone chickens. Man, they were all hard. And, 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 but they always had just about every time I seen one of them, they had to fight back. They had to fight back. Rooster would get on top of them. They didn't come out like you think they would. They were beautiful little slick grayers. You thought they'd come stroking. But they, every one of them that I seen that just about had to fight back to win. They were beautiful little green legged, red eyed gray roosters. Beautiful little roosters. I actually had one of those hens. Uh, one of the guys, uh, 
my daddy worked with him that bought chickens from Grady Fields, and they bought chickens. They didn't buy chickens to sell. But back then, this is the legal days of sport. They bought chickens. This is when I was a little boy. These guys bought chickens. They started fighting chickens back then. Uh, Cockfights would start on Friday night and end Sunday evening. You know, maybe you go, you go to three different places. You go anywhere you wanted on any given day. And they did. Chickens got campaigned. They got fought. They didn't get talked about and pictures taken of them. They got fought. That's how, that's reason they were so good a rooster back then. Because uh, they got to find out how good they was regularly. I've seen a lot of them little polecat chickens fight. They were the game of little gray roosters i ever seen. But uh, and, they, and they were busy when they hit a lick. They just didn't hit often enough for me. And, uh, of course, I would never have been a gray chicken man, so I'm a little biased. But I actually had one. I had a hen. We, we bred her to a brown red cock. She was half of the uh, half of the hatch and half of the gray. She was beautiful. I'll never forget her. And uh, one of Daddy's friends that got chickens from JD, like I said, I'm, from Grady, like I said, had he gave me one of those little pullets one day. I seen a cock fight, and, and uh, he told Daddy, if y'all follow me home, I'm going to give that boy one of them gray pullets. And he did. And and we bred her to a brown red cow because we, Daddy automatically said, we got to breed her to a brown red. And, I, and now I know why, because Daddy wanted them a little busier. And both the sons won. They were good roosters, beautiful roosters. Uh, but black grays. And of course, it was a 100% gaff bite during those days. But that's my question, guys. And you never seen any. Everything you've seen that had to do with sweater was pretty much like this old man saying here in his ad. And, you know, and I'm not a giant Grady Fields fan, but he's just stating the fact there about, you know, from what, as well as I can remember it, uh, you all them, them little hash chickens he's referring to right there were medium to dark mahogany red roosters, green legs. And they come peak on and straight on. So, my question is, who out there has the literature, the written word from that day, not off of Google, talking about sweater, any of those controversial guys, you know, those guys that... that you know, they're, to me, they're controversial because the word today doesn't match what I remember growing up hearing from the old timers and articles out of the magazine. Another one that's real controversial, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, it's the Joe Good chickens. And I got literature to prove that what's on social media on his is totally wrong. And because uh, a lot of people say in the the gray blood in the Joe Goo chickens was Clemens gray. Well, they they wasn't. It was frost. It was the frost gray. It was the same gray as that gray right there. It was all come from the regular gray. All that come from that Madigan regular. Anyway, that is the topic right there when we're talking about sweater. I'm gonna share this over to. YouTube, I'd love for some of you guys to share it over to the other social media sites, Facebook, something like that, any of you guys, I may share it over there myself, but it, it's a real interesting topic. One thing I don't want to hear is comments like, that's way off the topic. We... We want to stay on this topic right here. And, and with, with not just, I, I got them, mine from Harry Wallbanger and his were blah, 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 blah. I mean, you know, we don't care about all that. What we're trying to do is find good, solid knowledge, facts of the time and day. That's the only way you're going to learn anything. And like I said, this is a man's ad here. This ain't, 
you know, it's just his ad, but it, that ad pretty much lines up with everything that I have ever knew back in the days of cockfighting in the United States. While we're on Grady Fields, I'm going to tell y'all one more thing. One of them boys that bought chickens from Grady bought some chickens from him, some roundhead fowl, called Boston Roundheads. And that's another controversial there. And they were uh, probably the best chickens that he, he sent him. And they were a little, you know, cherry red, white-legged, black spurred roosters, pecan. And they were good roosters. I mean, they were good roosters. He couldn't feed a goat, the guy who bought them. Couldn't feed a goat, but he raised a bunch of them chickens from Grady Fields, and they were all good cocks, but he couldn't get one sharp. Never one of them pretty much, you know, they pretty much just had to do it out of their heart and uh, out of their genetics. And they were all pretty good roosters, but them little roundheads to me impressed me more than anything. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this. Let's hear your comments. Be sure to share it. Like it, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're going to keep them coming. And uh, I sure would like if anybody has some good, solid lit literature from somebody reputable uh, from that day, you, you can send me, send it to me, and I will do the same thing I'm doing right here. And we'll all read it together. All right, guys. Hope everybody has a good night. Thank you.